Okay, so first coffee shot. Which of the following must be followed? First keyword is must. It means mandatory. We don't have an option to select. We don't have an option to customize. Okay, must be followed. While developing, developing is a present tense. They have not developed yet. They are in developing the information security policy in the organization. So which of the following must be followed while developing an information security policy in the organization? So in this question, there are three keywords are there. Must, which is mandatory. Developing, they are in a present tense. They are preparing a policy. So that must be there. See, when we're talking about policy or anything, we always follow the top-down approach. Okay, top-down approach. Where we're starting with the first regulations. Okay, then we have a business requirement and then we create a policy and then we talk about the operation. And we are in a stage of building a policy. Business requirement can be customized, best to be follow, but must to be follow is regulation. So option A is meet with the stakeholder to decide how to comply, makes sense. Legal regulations, makes sense. Business requirement, makes sense. Industry standard, this will be come into the picture when you're creating the policy. Once you create a policy, then you refer the standard because standard is the tool by which you enforce the policy in the organization. So D is eliminate meet with the stakeholder to decide how to comply they are not in a position to comply they are in a position to approved we get an input from them okay we need to provide them outcome of the policies so a is also removed business requirement definitely best to be follow after the legal regulation that is the next best answer but the most important thing at least your policy should cover the legal regulations because that cannot be customized okay that's where the answer is b for beta Let's move to the next coffee shot. Okay, so now we're going to discuss about the next question. What is the purpose of security awareness in the organization? What is the purpose of security awareness in the organization? So we have a three things here. One is basically called awareness. One is basically talk about training. And one is basically talk about the education. Awareness is basically used to modify the behavior. Training is used to modify the skill and education is basically modify the career. Okay, that is the difference. Awareness is a short term. Training is basically mid term and education is a long term. So when you're talking about uh, awareness, it's like a fire drill program. Training is like a fire marshal program and education is like I sent you for two year program of talking about end to end physical security and all that. So when we're creating a policy, policy talk about why we need this. But training and awareness talk about how to follow that policy. Okay, we must have an encryption that is a part of the policy. But how to create an encryption, what data and all that, that is part of a training and awareness. So question talking about what is the purpose of security awareness. They're not talking about training. They're talking about only security awareness in the organization. Awareness is also introduced to improve the weakest link of an organization, which is called as a people. Okay. So here the question talking about what is the purpose of security awareness in the organization. Option A, simply to focus attention on security and allow individuals to recognize IT security concerns and respond accordingly. Now think from a manager point of view. I'm going to convince my management why we need awareness and actually why we need awareness so that we can basically give the idea to the people. We give the visibility to the people. We give the awareness to the people about how to respond and everything. And that is covered in the A. Option B is produce relevant needed security skill and competency by practitioners of functional specialty other than IT security. But why functional? It is more like awareness. So this is more like a training option. Option C is security skills and competency of a various functional specialty produce IT security specialists and professional capable of vision and proactive response. Again, it is part of a training. Require the level of knowledge and competency necessary for their roles. Professional development validated through the certification. Certification part of the training. So the close option here is answer A. Because awareness basically focus on attention on security and also allow individual to recognize the IT security concerns and respond appropriately. And the what is the best way to measure the awareness training is increase in the incident report and decrease in a security violation. Okay. So I have some pointer here. Security awareness training is a method by which organization can inform employees about their roles, 
and expectation surrounding their roles in their observation of the information security requirement okay that is the thing we have so let's move to the next coffee shot okay in which stage of sdlc security must be considered so as a consultant i am a risk advisor i am a manager okay okay in which stage of sdlc security must be considered see as a manager as a consultant i have to think this question because someone has asked me where you want to introduce security option a function requirement function requirement is a second stage after having a meeting with the customer we are documenting a functional okay what is the function we need in the application so they're saying that in that phase option b development stage development stage when we developing that time add the security design you design the entire application okay but close option is basically d we should introduce security as early as possible and by this way we can able to save cost and time okay might be during a meeting if we don't consider security during a functional requirement we don't interpret and if we miss in the functional requirement we will not carry in the development so that is why always remember as a consultant we always recommend security should introduce as early as possible in a process in a product in technology by which we can able to save time and cost that's why the answer is d for delta okay because as a consultant i'm giving an answer if you ask as a practitioner answer is development because during a development i want a security but as a manager i want to save cost because i have to save cost and time so if i don't consider security later on we launch the application with bug and all that then we need to roll back which is basically more cost for us that's why the answer is d for delta let's move to the next coffee shot okay what is the ultimate goal of risk management now question talking about outcome question is not talking about process they saying ultimate goal someone asked me prab what is the ultimate goal of risk management identification of risk if the question talking about what is the first step in the risk management then i will go for identification of risk okay analysis of risk if the question talking about second stage then i will go for a b a and b is part of a scope if the question talking about what is consist in a risk management i will go with a and b mitigate to an acceptable level that is also true but mitigation is one of the treatment by doing multiple treatment we are reducing risk to an acceptable level that is where the ultimate goal of a risk management is to lower the risk to an acceptable level okay that's where the answer is d for delta let's move to the next coffee shot what is the first stage of first step in bia bia stand for business impact analysis so bia is the most important pillar of bcp because bia help me to prioritize what need to be recover and how quickly i can recover bia help me to prioritize what is a recovery strategy we need to follow bi does not include recovery strategy but bia help me to prioritize so they saying the what is the first step in bia option a adopt an efficient method of information gathering makes sense schedule the meeting with the business stakeholder makes sense understand the business makes sense build the dr plan but dr plan will be built based on the bia so d definitely removed and to understand the business and schedule the meeting first we need to adopt the method so the close option is basically a because first we need to identify method of information gathering in which i will add the business stakeholder details and understand the capture of business attributes okay so b is basically and c come after the adoption of the method so once we need to define the method by which we need to capture the information and then we capture the information about scheduling meetings and understanding of the business that's why the answer is a for alpha let's move to the next coffee shot okay what is the primary goal now this time is not document step this time is not document sequence this time they're talking about the outcome what is the primary goal of bia option a build disaster recovery plan for an organization see based on bia we prepare the recovery strategy okay but itself the goal of bia is not preparing a dr plan it help me to prioritize a dr plan option b prioritize list of time critical business and estimate the recovery time for each process makes sense option c analyze consolidate presented with the recommendation to management that is also makes sense and option d is mitigate the risk to an acceptable level that is the ultimate goal of a risk management so at least to save your time i will remove a and d so we left with b and c see analyze consolidate presented to the management to the recommendation to the management 
that will become based on the BIA. Okay, BIA doesn't talk about this. BIA talk about the prioritized list of time critical business and estimate the recovery time of each process. So that is the ultimate goal of BIA by using a MTD, RTO and RPO. That's why the answer is B for beta. Why I'm not going with the C? Because C is more like a risk management decisions. That is part of after BIA. The BIA value I will use. Question is talking about what is the goal of performing a BIA. So BIA helped me to prioritize what need to be restored and how quickly we can restore. Let's move to the next coffee shot. Okay, which authentication protocol is least secure for internal communication? See, when you're talking about authentication protocol, I am a manager, I am a consultant. I don't know how protocol works. But from a CISSP point of view, you need to know what is this protocol stand for? That's it. You don't need to know how this work. That is not required. You need to know the feature of the protocol, not a working of the protocol. Remember that because this is how the exam going to be framed. They give you problem that which one is better, telnet or SSH. Definitely, you know, telnet send the data in the plain text, SSH encrypt the data. So that is the only thing you need to know. So someone asked me which one is more secure SSH because I know SSH use encryption. That's it. How SSH work? That is not my goal because I'm a manager. I'm a consultant. Same thing here, which authentication protocol is least secure for internal communication to answer this. You should know, you should know the features. Now, in the case of PAP, they send the data in the clear text in a challenge authentication protocol. They send in a challenge re request. EAP is used for enterprise, which used for exchanging for certificate authentication based protocols. Network authentication protocol, there is nothing called NAP. We have a network access protection, which is basically used to evaluate the benchmark of the system and then allow the system to be part of the network. So D definitely removed. C, B, A left. Out of falling, A is basically less secure. There is a dedicated video I made, which is called as authentication protocol. CISSP authentication protocol. You can check that video in which I have covered all these three protocols in details with the coffee shots. So here, the least secure for the internal communication is called as a A, then after challenge and then we have a EAP, okay? So let's move to the next coffee shot. What is the most effective way to protect data on mobile devices? Key, two specific keyword, most mean mandatory, regular, and second keyword is data. Option A use MDM solution, it is great, but MDM solution only offer the managing of devices. In the case of device loss, MDM will not be the most effective solution. Security awareness training will not give guarantee. We just conducted, we explained them, but sometime because of a stupidity of the employee, it can bring the data in trouble. Use encryption makes sense. Implement principle of least privilege, somehow it can able to stop the attacks. But the most effective control is the encryption. Even encryption will be work in the case of device is lost. Now traveling during the traveling device is lost and someone get access to a device, still they cannot able to open the device. Why? Because it is encrypted. Your data is encrypted. So encryption still providing the persistent security in the case of loss stage. That's why the answer is C for Charlie. Okay. Let's move to the next coffee shot. Which technique can be used to analyze free and open source application vulnerability? It's a new topic in CSSV. Okay. So option A, SCA. So what is SCA? Software composition analysis. So SCA scan can generate a comprehensive list of the open source component present with the software and containers, including also the dependency resolved in the project during application build phase. So in the Dave Secops, it is basically play a very important role. So we have our open source components when we procure from our suppliers. It is very difficult for us to analyze the vulnerabilities in, the, in, in those open source applications. So with the help of SCA, we can do that. So SCA tool keep track of the open source components used by your applications, which is critical both from a productivity and security standpoint. Second point is called as a SAST. SAST will be applicable in the case of code review. BAST is nothing called BAST. Audit is more like a governance process. So whenever the question talking about FOSS, open source in the case of COTS, answer is basically software composition analysis, okay? Because software composition analysis is basically analyze the application, analyze the open source and their associated vulnerability based on an inventory. And today it is used in a DevSecOps and all that. So this is all from my side. 
If you find this video useful, do share in your network and do let me know your, your feedback. Shall I make the, another video on the Think Like a Manager? If you're still not subscribed to my channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. Thank you. Goodbye.